It's time for a Drummer Nation. help facilitate that and have an impact on your life so that you can play drums, that means the world to me. The former Crescent Vanguard series are now widely available as part of the legendary Sabian HH models. HH symbols are traditionally hand hammered into shape and sound by Sabian craftsmen. Find out more about the Vanguard series and all other Sabian models at Sabian.com. Sound Synergy's Percussion Care Lubricants and Conditioners include a series of three products for total drum kit care and maintenance. Percussion Care products in your gig bag ensures your entire kit will always look and sound its best. Check out their website at soundsynergies.net. Hi, this is Stanton Moore. I've been playing and teaching drums for over 30 years. My new site, Stanton Moore Drum Academy, is the perfect online drum learning platform for any level drummer to learn how to play the drums the same way I did. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you as subscribers on the site, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And with that, we're back for another episode of Drummer Nation Live. Thanks for sharing some of your lunch hour with me. I do this every Wednesday at 1. I also have a full-blown interview show that puts a new show up every two weeks. That's a pre-record with some very well-known drummers. Next up, and presently up there right now, is uh, uh, Adam Nussbaum, part two. Next coming up uh, later this week will be Joe LaBarbera. If you sign up for our mailing list, I will let you know when each one of those posts. And uh, I sure would appreciate it. Plus, there's a prize for that we'll talk about later. Um, on this show, we're going to try to get in touch with Steve Maxwell. He, he owns Maxwell Drums in, in um, New York and Chicago. And the news is he's just bought Forks Drum Closet. So we're going to try to get him on the phone and talk a little bit about that because, uh, well, but with the caveat that he's very busy and I'm, not, I'm hoping I can get him. So uh, the other news is I'm going to go to NAM on Friday, Summer NAM. It's not the show it used to be, but... Uh, I have a meeting with Andy Zildjian about all things Crescent and Sabian. Uh, there's a new article about moi, about this show in Drum Magazine that I'd like to brag about. And um, before that, let's do a couple more spots. I want you to really pay attention to my sponsors because they help me out quite a bit. So here's a few more. Osha means a good time with lots of music, lots of friends, and lots of love. Drummers seeking a quick and easy way to muffle bass drums on the fly, look no further. Muff Bone offers an effective way to instantly dial in your sound in just a few seconds while seated at the kit. Find out more at muffbone.com. When seated at the drums, pressure on the tailbone, lower back, and hip joints can lead to pain. Only Carmichael Drum Thrones are scientifically designed to relieve and prevent discomforts associated with prolonged sitting. Carmichael Thrones, we got your back. Okay, please take note of those sponsors. They're great people, great products, and they help me out quite a bit. Let's get the show started with a trivia question, and there's a big prize, too. So the first of all, the question, I'll announce the answer later. This is a tough one. Sometimes they're very easy. This is a tough one. The question is, who is the drummer first known with the band Invisible Touch before becoming known more widely as a lead singer? Drummer with the band Invisible Touch before he became known as a lead singer. And I'll have the answer later with a great prize. you got to hear about the prize because you get it whether you win or not. Okay, You don't even have to get it right to win. Um, I've got some people tapping in here. Joe Tapia, thank you. Tapping in from Tapia. Get it? <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, Joe. 
uh, hit me up with some thumbs up or some messages or questions, and I'll be glad to address them. Now, we also have the drummer joke of the day. The drummer of the joke of the day is a group of terrorists hijacked an airplane, an airliner, on the tarmac, and when they were negotiating with the control room, they told him, unless their demands were met, they were going to release. Wait a minute, I don't think I said this right. Let me back up. A group of terrorists, <laughs> sorry about that, nothing worse than blowing a joke. A group of terrorists hijacked an airliner on the tarmac, and the airliner was full of drummers. That's the part you have to have. The airliner was full of drummers, and when they were negotiating, they threatened to release a drummer every hour if their demands weren't met. Kind of not funny when you blow the punchline and screw up the whole joke. But anyway, what do you want for nothing, huh? I'm not a comedian. I'm funny, but looks aren't everything. Pump. Okay, let's get into the show. Um, first of all, I'm going to NAM in, in a couple of days just to see Andy Zildjian because we make that kind of a meeting spot for us. It's three hours up the road for me. And we'll talk about what's going on with Crescent and marketing plans. And it's always great to see him. Now, the, the unusual thing about NAM this year is that the summer show, you know, used to be a big deal. You have the winter show in Anaheim, which is a monster. And the summer show was in Nashville, and it couldn't fit in the facility they had. They had people renting booths that were under stairways and behind, you know, all kinds of out-of-the-way places, hallways, corridors. Um, and so they tried moving it, and they went to a couple of different places. They did one in Indianapolis, I think, which was known as the Wake by the lake <laughs> and um, market forces too have dictated it but uh, oddly enough now that Nashville has a beautiful convention center brand new in Nashville downtown Nashville it's just smoking if you haven't been there in a while it's very cool now that Nashville's got their act together and it's a great place to bring a convention the show's almost died to the point where um, like I looked at the symbol companies who were displaying none of the majors are no Zildjian, no Sabian, no Peisty, no Meinl, uh, none of the major drum companies, except I think I saw Pearl had a booth and Remo had a small booth. And that's about it. I think it's a, it's, it's a regional show for distributors. So your product may be available. If you're a manufacturer, it may be there at a distributor's booth. I don't know. I'll give you a report when I come back. So that's NAM. Um... Let me see if I can get Mr. Maxwell on the phone. Well, it's not quite time yet. Let me show you something else. This is something I'm proud of. I got a call from Phil Hood this week. Phil Hood is uh, associated with Drum Magazine. He's had some job title changes lately, but he's been a force behind Drum Magazine for a long time. And he said, hey, Michael, how about if we do an interview on uh, you with your podcast? Because podcasting is kind of a burgeoning field that's taking off. And thankfully, I, I, I think I have a nice one. It's, it's growing, and it, 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 Phil noticed it. So he said, I said, great, when do you want to do it? He said, how about 10 minutes? <laughs> I said, well, I'm just waking up, man. How about 15 minutes? And um, so we did it. And I like that because I'm a live guy. You know, I don't want the questions ahead of time to think about. I don't want to plan what I want to talk about. I just want to do, let's fly it live, you know, let's just set it up and go so we did a great interview and, and or he did a great interview and I have uh, that to show you here this is in the current uh, drum magazine I'm on their website and as soon as I click in here it'll say classic drummer I'm sorry <laughs> that's another magazine I work for citizen drummer how Michael Vosbein makes podcasting work and there's all kinds of stuff in there we talk about Here's my call out. Podcasting is still a medium in search of a business model. Indeed it is. There's some photos that were nice enough to include. That's my studio. It's a little tiny place in my basement, but everything looks bigger on TV. So uh, that's from the side. That would be looking at me from over there. And you can see the beginning of the lights behind me. And then there's some big soft boxes and stuff above me. It talks about some gear. Oh, I didn't notice this picture they put up. Here's my board, my production board. You can see some of the things I was, I'm doing. And um, there you go. So check that out in Drum Magazine. And uh, very grateful to Phil Hood and the guys at Drum Magazine for the coverage. Can't hurt, right? Need, a little, need all the help I can get. Uh, also, if you have a small company or a large company, I do sell ads, as you noticed. And I have a Patreon site as well. 
But let's jump into something else. Let me see if I can get Mr. Maxwell on the phone. Should be able to grab him right here. Let's see. And I'll switch to him once we get him lined in. Whoa, 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 what happened? What happened? Steve, are you there? I'm here, Michael. I think I need headphones for this. Steve? Yes, I'm here. You there? Okay, great. Let me patch you in here. Uh, okay. Can I get a little more volume from you? Uh, let's see what I can do here. No, about I, I, volume. Got, I, got, I, I got it here. Now, can I right. see you, though? I don't see you. Can you hit your video uh, button? Let me see here. Uh, camera button. There, you go. there he is. Now I can All switch right. to you. All right. Now, be advised, you are live on Drummer Nation. Got it. And anything you say can and will be. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> okay, so let me, I need to, uh, some updates from you. You're making quite a splash in the industry now. I, I understand you have made arrangements to purchase Forks Drum Closet? Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, Gary uh, has done such an incredible job for 36 years, and he's got a wonderful team of people. And, uh, you know, Gary sold the property that his shop is on, and I think that's wonderful for both he and Melissa. And Gary and Melissa want to kind of move on to the next phase of their lives. So uh, Gary contacted me and we talked and we are just thrilled to carry that legacy forward uh, with his team of people. And also uh, we will be carrying the name forward as well. It should remain named Forks Drum Closet. So our goal is to serve that natural community exactly like Gary has and his team for the last 36 years. And we're really excited to do it. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm sure you are, and, and as well you should be. Can you tilt your camera down a little bit? I'm seeing more above your head than we need. There you go. That's How's that? perfect. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Well, for people who don't know, Gary Forkham is the owner, previous owner of Forks Drum Closet. He started off with a, I think it's called Corner Music, a little music store, that he had a, a closet as a drum shop, bought right. the building next door. Luckily, they owned the building both of them the the, the property right. they did very well with that and i think people were concerned that nashville was going to lose a great drum shop but it's in good hands with you well thank you and and one of our goals uh michael has always been that as much as we love the people who run the big box companies i love them to death we know them all and they're great but to me it's very important that the independent shops exist and not just exist but also thrive and that we keep those in major markets so that's why we have the shop in chicago the one in New York City and Nashville. It's a wonderful place. It's somewhere I always would have wanted to open a shop because of the music scene there. It's so incredible. But I would have never opened a shop in a city where I have a friend. So all things lined up pretty well, and it, and it worked out great. We're happy about it. I agree that the big cities need drum shops. I have no beef with uh, the big box stores. And uh, they're not as specialized, though, as a dedicated drum shop. They can't be. And, and right. it, it also serves, and I know you're a big advocate of this, as a hub of a community. Oh, it's huge, yeah. To, to, to have a place of community is so important. Uh, New York's an incredibly expensive city to do business in, but we're there. And part of that is for a reason. You need to have a place where people can come, meet uh, other drummers, uh, the percussionists, students who can meet people that come through who are their idols. Uh, there needs to be a place where that can happen other, other than just online or through Skype lessons or the other. That sense of community is really important to us. I agree. I was in Los Angeles the decade of the 80s before you guys were involved. And uh, Stan and his dad, Bob Yeager, had pro drum there. And you could go in there on a Friday afternoon and run into anybody, you know? Right. <laughs> That's exactly how it was in New York when I used to study in the early 70s at Frank Ippolito's Pro Percussion study with Papa Joe, Elvin would come in, Mel Lewis would come in, Art Blakey would come in. You know, I mean, that, that stuff is so valuable. Today, if people come to our shop and maybe Steve Jordan's there or maybe Vinny's there or, you know, pick any number of people, that's meaningful to the students as well as just to other, other customers who admire those people. Very meaningful. Now, you're also a, a big player in the vintage scene. Are you going to bring some more of that to Forks? <clears throat> Yes, you know, what I see with Forks is an interesting example. Uh, Gary's model is more of a traditional drum shop, per se, uh, pro drum shop. Our model is more high-end vintage and high-end custom. And so what we see here is uh, the, the, the model of Forks actually brings something to us because I want to introduce a little bit more of that traditional retail side to what we do in New York. By the same token, I think what we can do for Forks 
is delivered down to them uh, more vintage, more of the high-end custom, also some of the work we do in Illinois where we do relaving and rehammering of symbols. Uh, those are the types of things that we think can add value. We don't want to change anything about the Nashville model. We simply want to continue to do it and then also enhance things where we can. And to that end, uh, Terry Bissett, who for the last several years has been at Ludwig, Terry is leaving Ludwig to join us and he will be moving to Nashville. And Terry's role will be heading up basically what I'll call the retail division. And he will be overseeing uh, the Forks integration for us, which is great. And the other beautiful part of this is that Terry's background, I mean, he ran pro drum shops. He also ran the drum business for Sam Ash. And then he was on the manufacturing side with Tom and Ludwig. His background is in that more traditional retail space, which is a beautiful compliment. Uh, he knows that far better than I do. And that skill set is really critical going forward. And we're really glad to have him. He starts July 1. Well, he's a great asset, and he's also a pal to everybody in the industry. I mean, yeah. I've known Terry for a long time, and I, I've never heard a negative word about him, man. He's a great guy. Yeah, and, great guy. And, he and is. Good for you. Well, I wish you very much luck and success, continuing on with that, expanding your reach into a, another great market. Now, are you going to be in Nashville for the NAMM show? Uh, no, I'm not going to be there for the NAMM show. Um, Terry's going to be down there on that weekend. Uh, he'll be down in Nashville on the 30th, not at the show, but mm -hmm. working on some things, uh, you know, prior to transition. So I'll be back down in Nashville, but probably not till the week of the 9th. Well, I'm going down on Friday, yeah, so you missed a chance for me to buy you lunch. <laughs> but, but Nashville <laughs> okay, is, is three hours away. I go up there all the time, so I'll come up and, and see you. Maybe we'll do a show when you when you get rolling in, in the, new, the new digs yes. and the new shop. We will. We're going to do a soft opening, and then we'll do a grand opening. Uh, the new facility is just a beautiful, beautiful space. Uh, now, where and, are you moving it's, to? It's uh, 308 South Chestnut. So it's only a couple, maybe it's five, six minutes away from the original shop. Uh, and it's a it's a great standalone building that was rehabbed from start to finish. Uh, state of the art, beautiful high ceilings, uh, natural lighting, and it's going to be great. We're really excited about it. And it's very close to where the original was. All of your shops have great ambiance. I know the one in New York was a recording studio. You've got wood floors, yes. and it's beautiful, yes. man. Um, reminds me of uh, our buddy Jim Pettit. He has a beautiful shop, too. Yes, but, yes. Uh, it's nice to see retail for drummers that doesn't look like hell, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for doing the show. This is just a cameo drop-in that, that I asked sure. guys to to come in on Drummer Nation Live. You've been a supporter of Drummer Nation, and we certainly ap appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure All right, brother. We'll Thanks, talk man. soon. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, I don't need my headphones anymore. That's yeah. a great guy, Steve Maxwell, and he's a, uh, a real shaker in this industry nowadays, and, and he came on about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, and, and uh, he's just been a great asset to everyone concerned. Um, so we wish him well with that. Okay, I, that's about my show. I want I don't like to go too long. We're coming up to 20 minutes. So I'm going to give you the answer to the trivia question and the prize. Okay? So the question, as you remember, was a uh, drummer who came up with a band named Invisible Touch before being known as a lead singer. Anybody know? I don't see any answers down here. Uh, I go to Steve's store all the time. I know Jess and the guys from Anthony Amodia. Amodio. Hope I didn't murder his name. Tanya's there. Hi. Um, anybody know the answer to this? Invisible Touch. It's really a tough question. But the drummer who became known as a lead singer later on is Phil Collins. And, uh, you know, as great a singer as he is, he wasn't even, I've been reading, he wasn't even the first choice uh, for, for the, the band, the, 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 the famous band he was in. Uh, uh, he, they, they auditioned like 400 drummers. I mean, vocalist, before they settled on Phil. And, of course, the rest is history. <laughs> uh, Genesis, by the way, uh, before he came out on a solo career. Okay, now the prize. If you got it right, you get a prize. If you got it wrong, you still get a prize. The prize is I am giving away a full-year scholarship or subscription to the Stanton Moore Drum Academy. That's a $200 gift, and it's a great vehicle for anybody at any level if you're a kid just learning there's plenty of elementary stuff on there if you're a seasoned 
grizzled veteran pro like me, you can open it up and find a lot of cool stuff to practice to. Stanton is always moving forward, always presenting new cool stuff. So what do you have to do to enter, you might say? Even if you got the question right or wrong, what you do is you go to the Drummer Nation website, drummernation.com, and you sign up for our mailing list. That's all you have to do. So that when these shows come out, the live show is every Wednesday, but when the, uh, the, the long interview, long format interview shows come out, we'll let you know. That's all. We don't sell it to anybody else. We don't spam you. But it does help with advertisers if we have a healthy mailing list. So please join that. And I, I, I think I announced it was uh, September 1st. We'll announce the winner on that. And uh, all you have to do is sign up. And if you've already signed up, you're, st you're in the running. So, you know, you'll be part of the, 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 the pot that's picked from. Okay? Um, uh, just getting some messages coming in. I've got a lot going on here. So please do that. Um, subscribe to Drummer Nation anywhere you can. They are, my shows are, are, are all over the place. Anywhere you can see a podcast, it's video. A lot of places carry it audio if you just want to download it and hear it in the car on the way to work or whatever. The live shows are live, but most people see them later on. They're, they're archived. And it's all available in its various incarnations from the Drummer Nation website. Please give me the hits there. I can use them. All right, one other thing. My last thing is a call to action to support us at Patreon. Patreon is a, uh, a site where you can uh, pledge money to the cause. Every month they'll hit you up for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Come on, guys, man. This is great content I'm trying to give you, and I, some traveling, there's a lot of expenses involved. Fork up a couple of bucks a month and see if you can help me out. Okay, and uh, coming up, uh, the next interview I think I said was with Joe LaBarbera. Past that, we have, uh, I don't know, off the top of my head, there's a whole bunch of great stuff coming up. So stay tuned for that. That being the case, I think I'm going to let you go. Back to me. Um, that's all. Any questions? I don't see any specific questions. I see people are watching, and I appreciate that. Um Hit me with an email if you need to, or just uh, forward my uh, links to the shows. Help me get some of this going with some drummers. And please read the article on Drum Magazine. Okay, with that, I'm going to sign off. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. And later this week, there'll be that show, uh, the, the full Germination show with Joe LaBarbera posted. All right. Now I have to look over my glasses. Sorry to look down and find the way out. Here it is. Thanks. See you next time. Bye. This is your host, Michael Vosbein, and I'd like to thank our friends at Sabian Symbols, Sound Synergies, Stanton Moore Drum Academy, and Drum Center of Portsmouth. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.